It's 6.30 a.m. Larry Scott is flying in a Navajo chieftain at 130 knots and 8,000 feet. His destination, ground zero at the southern tip of Manhattan. This is actually an infrared image of the ground as we're passing over it. Using the latest in laser and heat imaging technology, his mission is to help ensure the safety and efficiency of recovery efforts at ground zero. Okay, this is the uh, precise line navigation. And you can see as the lines is, you bring these two indicators into coincidence. He's within literally a few feet of a predetermined track. This is the, uh, the camera. It's all primed and ready to go. The video is recording. Engage the laser recording. Uh, this is ground zero. These are the two federal buildings. Communication building is over here. Number seven just went out of sight. I've seen it so many times. I just looked for a couple of key buildings. This is the fire scene right in here. These glowing hot spots. You can actually see some of the water jets. There's building seven. Scott's mission has three vital components. He collects digital pictures to help plan the removal of debris. He maps the site with a device called LIDAR, a sophisticated laser that digitally defines the buildings in rubble heaps. And he records thermal video, a crucial guide to determining the location of ongoing fire. Scott is a technician with Earth Data, a cutting edge firm working closely with the New York State Office for Technology. There are still extensive fires burning under the site, and what we're able to do each day when we fly is, is um, monitor the change in those fires. So if you've got firemen or anybody around that area working, they could in fact be badly burned by a, a sudden flare-up. The LIDAR is the most sophisticated tool for pinpointing potential danger spots. It's the laser scanner, and it, it has an infrared pulsing laser and a scanning mirror and actually measures the topography of the ground. And it's it's very high speed. It, it collects like 900,000 points a minute. And the points are just samples of the ground, which goes into making the topographic maps. The result of this hyper-fast laser is a map revealing the heights and movement of remaining buildings and rubble piles. We're also monitoring the rubble pile each day to see if there is actually, as I said earlier, co uh, condensing uh, rubble or if rubble is moving in any particular direction. But what we have found out is that the rubble pile is pretty stable. Earth data must interpret the LIDAR so that it looks like a skyline and not just so many digital points. So they create colorized maps. This is data that's actually being extracted from the tapes that you saw being brought in and loaded onto the computers. And what we have here is a, a sequence um, of information about the what's now known as Ground Zero. This imagery here was taken a year earlier. As you can see clearly here, the Twin Towers are here and obviously the twin towers are completely gone but you can see here the rubble piles and you can see here these are the spikes of what's left of the uh, the northern tower and some of them of the uh, hotel etc that used to be here as well the, the the marriott hotel to make better use of this data excavation workers also need a good clear picture of the site these images are are being used to try and give people a, an overview of the site once you're there at the site and you see the magnitude of the devastation, it's really hard to orient yourself. These images that we took on the, on the first day's flight, you can actually see extensive um, uh, smoke uh, emitting from, the, from this site. The crystal clear photos are then married to Earth Data's images from the heat-seeking camera. The fire department gets this information. They decide where they're going to play their hoses onto the fire to try and and keep it to a minimum. If you look right here again, you can see an actual fire hose stream coming out onto this area right here. That's that white stream. And you can see that uh, between the 16th and the 17th that this fire has moved back a little bit, which was the whole plan. The progression from the first day of shooting, September 16th, shown here in red, is remarkable. That's the 16th to the 28th. There's still, you know, obviously a hot spot there. What is it like today? Maybe we need to go a little bit further. Today's the orange, the very beginning to today. today. Hopefully, the crisis has been averted. For the people at Earth Data, their satisfaction knowing that good information and precise planning have played a vital role at Ground Zero.
but there's not been a life lost that I know of on the site since the recovery program started due to somebody either falling into um, a void or uh, being burned by a flare-up of a fire. So uh, we as a, as a team here get great satisfaction out of the fact that we feel that what we're giving them is keeping people out of harm's way and potential additional loss of life.